What's good? It's your girl Tati and I'm back with another review of Dark Side of the Ring and this week we're talking about Rob Black's XPW. You guys, this was so difficult to watch because every time you're trying to process what you just heard, they're saying some other shit you need to process and usually I do take notes of little things that I want to remember for the review and I, I just found that hard to do because I was like, yo, what the fuck am I hearing right now? It's crazy. So in 1999, Rob, you know, he creates XPW, um, basically um, deathmatch wrestling. And um, I mean, 1999 was a fucking good year in pro wrestling. So why not, right? The thing is that he didn't really know much about wrestling, he wasn't a wrestler. I guess he just knew people who was in that world and somehow made it happen. You're a guy with, with an idea, you got people who are supporting you, and it just happened. And he decides to have a company where it's like half wrestling and half porn. And to him, now this actually helps him in a way. I think the porn part of it helps him get an audience because he did use these ladies in the ring as well and um i guess they were pretty um had really nice bodies and whatnot and men wanted to see that and um these ladies would be out in the ring half naked probably even naked god knows and this is what had people coming um to come see the shows and then ultimately they grew a fan base because of the wrestling as well now at one point there were um they were in talks with ecw um, you know, they wanted to bring ECW to the West Coast because they were um, based in um, LA and basically merge the two companies together. I think for Rob, that would have been a huge opportunity for him because the wrestling aspect of it, he didn't really know. Um, the porn aspect, from what I just saw from the show, he ain't know that either, but he was making money and he had, he had people who he could have brought into um this merger promotion with ecw and what happens is rob gets upset because ecw actually gets a televised uh deal and they kind of they didn't basically he didn't hear from them so they didn't want to bring them on board with um you know that television deal obviously paul he's crazy as fuck um, but he's a genius and I know he knew for sure that bringing Rob along for a deal that they have on television was just going to ruin it for them. And he wanted to like keep that like out of the way. So Rob is upset because that was his opportunity as well in a way, even though like they probably never mentioned um, XPW for that deal. Um, that could have been an opportunity for him. So now... Um, ECW actually have their first uh, televised show in LA and um, XPW and everybody over there heard about it and um, Rob comes up with this idea like hey we're gonna go over there and um, basically sabotage everything um, he just wanted their presence to be felt he wanted Paul and, and everybody from ECW to know that hey y'all on our turf and, and we run shit around here so that kind of backfired on them so the guys from XPW, they go over there and they got front row seats to the show. Um, they basically got kicked out by security. They were handing out flyers all over um, to everyone who was coming to the show, letting them, promoting themselves basically. And um, ECW was like, nah, we can't have this shit going on out here. This is like our first show. Um, that's just too risky for us. And um, everybody that was there was kind of upset because Rob, this is Rob's plan and he didn't even show up to begin with. And um, while they're wondering where the hell is Rob, um, like half their guys are missing and they're like, where's everybody? And it turns out all the way in the other side of the arena, they're getting jumped by ECW guys because basically they're trying to sabotage their, their show. And even New Jack was there as well. He was interviewed for the show, probably his last interview. And um, he said his leg was broken and he was beating motherfuckers up with his crutches. And, you know, he they just didn't tolerate that shit of them coming over there to ruin the whole show for them. Now, I just found this so, like, childish in a way. Um, that Rob would send everybody over there to do his dirty work and they end up getting their asses jumped and he's not even there 
to experience that with everybody, you know, being the leader behind doors and whatnot. And um, ultimately, ECW do, uh, you know, lose their company. And these guys from ECW don't have anywhere to go. And Rob is on the phone calling everybody from ECW. Hey, come over here to XPW. I got a little contract for you. Come wrestle for me. And a couple of guys, they do go over there. And it was like, oh, they were so excited to score people like um, not just New Jack, but Sabu and Terry Funk. Like, you got Terry Funk. Like, it, it doesn't get better than that. It doesn't get any more extreme than that. So for them, they felt like, hey, they basically hit the jackpot. But the thing is, is that still there's no, like, wrestling um, experience with um rob who has this promotion and he wants to be in charge of everything but he doesn't necessarily know what the hell he's doing uh one of the wrestlers says he was very upset whenever they had put their hands up to block any types of shots and um you know as wrestlers they want to protect themselves so yeah you know blocking your face from a headshot is the best thing to do but to him, he feels like it makes him look like a pussy and he'd rather them take the headshot. Um, you know, it, it just looks good to him. But he didn't really realize the dangers of, you know, concussions and all these other things um, from getting direct hits with things like chairs. So um, who was it? I think it was Luke Hawks. Um, so basically, one match, he did put his hand up against his face for a chair shot. And he went backstage and uh, Rob is livid. He's like, why did you do that? You should have never did that. You need to keep your head down, hand down and just take the shot. And he's like, man, you don't know nothing about wrestling. Um, I'm trying to protect myself from getting seriously hurt. So the next match, without even telling uh, Luke what's going to happen, um, who was his opponent? Uh, God, I forgot his name. Um, his opponent had um, had him handcuffed, right? And this was done on purpose because he, Rob wanted his um, hands to be tied down in a way so that when his opponent, opponent is repeatedly hitting him in the head with a chair, that he couldn't block it. Like, that's how petty he was about the situation. Like, he was so upset that, you know, he wanted their wrestlers to look like no matter what happened to them, that they were able to take that without realizing that there's repercussions to getting certain types of shots, especially chair shots to the head. And um, he said he took about, what, three head shots and he had like a, a little dent on his skull. And he said he, he knew he had a concussion. He didn't go to the hospital. He's in his room throwing up. The, the world is spinning. He just, his head was pounding so bad. He didn't know what to do, but he just decided that you know he's just not going to do anything about it and unfortunately stay part of the company uh, many of them said that rob manipulated them to staying part of the company when they wasn't happy with being there and now here's where things got so like crazy okay um the porn aspect of it now their like office is a, a warehouse where they do the porn and they do the wrestling and um some of them said hey um you know how the hell are we gonna work like this like this is just so um ridiculous that both of these things are going on at the same time um somebody mentioned how um women would be wrestling and they have like sperm on them from literally doing a, a shoot with guys and um another one the guy said um a lady was in a pool eating chicken and some dude was peeing on her while she's eating like what the hell like that just sounds so freaking ridiculous like i i just stopped and i was like whoa did he really just say that another female wrestler was like while she's talking to uh um, one of the dudes who's on set for one of the movies they were doing he's literally just um masturbating in front of her saying hey i gotta keep myself um, arouse before my next scene or else Rob's going to be upset like Rob just had some kind of like everybody was like his puppet or whatnot like how are you part of this company and and not feeling some type of way like you're either in the porn industry or you're not and uh, he was so overprotective about his wife his wife was one of the she was like part of the porn industry but not the one behind um not the one in front of the camera basically behind the camera 
and um, he was so protective of her and he didn't mind if she flirted a little bit because he wanted everyone to know that you know she's pretty and he has a beautiful wife but she he just didn't want her cheating on him and um, meanwhile he's all the girls has already had sex with him any girl that came to do a movie he's had some type of sexual relationship with them but he don't want nobody looking at his girl right so one of the wrestlers his name is the messiah and um they kind of start having an affair um but no one knows this at the time just them two uh the messiah and um lizzie's his wife and um one day he didn't show up for a taping or a show one of them and um they were like well where is he and all of a sudden people are whispering about him sleeping around with his wife and um he's upset so he calls up the messiah and saying you know are you with my my wife like it's one thing if you're in front of the camera but for you to be messing with her behind my back that's something else and um I, he didn't he doesn't admit it right there but he's upset and he's like you know what you're fired i don't want you here anymore um basically he told him to leave town and that he was going to offer to pay his ticket to move out of the state or whatnot and the messiah is like hey man no way i'm not doing that basically he didn't want to run because it just didn't make sense you know your wife is being unfaithful to you that's your problem why do i have to run from that so this crazy ass situation happens where he's at home he's playing video games and all of a sudden two dudes two big black dudes open the door and he's thinking that's his roommate's friends that's just coming by and he just keep playing his game but then he hears them like kind of talking kind of loudly by the door like oh which oh you won't get him first or was it gonna be me and he's like what the fuck and they both just run towards him and he's trying to run away now one of them gets him in a chokehold and he mentions that the chokehold wasn't really put on properly so he thought that he, maybe he can get out of it and before he can even do that the other guy is holding on to his arm and his hand takes out pliers and cuts his thumb off and he's freaking out because it kind of happens quickly and he doesn't know what to do and he's trying to get out of the chokehold and the other guy grabs his other hand to be able to cut the other thumb but he ends up like um i guess pushing him off and then running towards the door and he's using his hand where the thumb was cut off uh to open the door uh to open the door with the door uh open the, with the doorknob but his hand can't grasp the doorknob because you don't really realize this but you kind of need your thumb to grasp onto something right so then he realized that's when it really sinked in that his thumb is gone because he cannot open the door and they grab him again and they hit him in the, over the head with a fish bowl and he is just freaking out and he gets a chance to run over to the door and they're um beating him up and he ends up defending himself but not for long and the two end up sprinting out the door leaving he said he put his hand under some cold water then he started searching for his thumb. He had no idea where it went. And he said he kept looking until he passed out. And that is just so crazy that something like that even happened. And I believe it was already too late for him to even find the thumb and um, possibly attach it back because he currently does not have a thumb. So now everyone hears about this and people are like they can't believe that it's him and how they end up hearing about the situation it was on america's most wanted i'm pretty sure you guys remember the show like if you're from the 90s you probably remember this show and they talk about the situation and obviously rob is number one suspect of this situation but they never prosecuted him because there's no proof of him actually doing this and um you know people kept asking him did you do this even new jack had approached him and said man you, you did you do this shit like he believed that it was him but rob just denied it to everyone except for one day where he was upset on everyone and he was like well if y'all don't like listen to me something to that effect um well then you can get your arm cut off too 
and that's when people started like wow okay he must have really did this for him to even say that and um once that had happened people started leaving because it just wasn't really worth it with all this violence like real violence and even some of the women who was part of the you know the pornographic films they were like they didn't want to take part of it because they were actually getting violent like you know there's there's movies where women wants to be physically you know um hurt however it just seemed like there was a lot of sexual abuse and um you know them actually hurting these women who was part of it and the women were just like they don't want to be part of it anymore and once the messiah was out of um xpw um they started they had new jack to be like their new guy but then new jack left after the whole scaffold incident and now he's like well who's gonna be his top guy and he just couldn't keep it together from there and uh the news outlets started reporting about the the pornographic movies and how graphic it was getting um they did like little documentary on it or whatnot so he goes on tv to the news to defend himself and what he does he basically challenges the government uh, about like uh prosecuting him like y'all got nothing on me uh to even you know compensate my my movies or come raid my place or whatnot so he's basically challenging them saying that even if you came over you're not gonna find anything and um they actually came over and he he started really feeling the pressure and he told everybody hey we're gonna get raided at some point if it happens don't be surprised and they actually do raid the place they take just about everything from the warehouse and um they had a lot of charges on them, um, but everything got dropped except for one thing about distributing, um, about something about distributing, like, uh, honestly, I can't even tell you. They had to find something and they ended up pleading guilty and he only serves um, like one year and one day. And I just found it crazy. Like they're like, now he's married, has children and he owns a, um, a hamburger joint somewhere in America and um I was like wow that's really keeping it low like people are not going to suspect that that's what you're doing with your life um this was like so interesting I can't even imagine something like that even happening to begin with but something like that would never fly in, in 2021 and I don't know how people even bought into it like how are you going to work to wrestle and then you're seeing shit like that happened there was so many incidents where people really got hurt and um to him he just didn't understand what it was that made wrestling wrestling and it had nothing to do with the death matches i i that could that probably hurted them as well um because of having real injuries but what i think what hurt them was the fact that he was trying to balance two different things and he probably wasn't good at either of them and like i said it's one of those situations where it's uh you know one mastermind and having the right people with him at the right time that made things work out but ultimately it just um crumbled um i'm gonna look on youtube to see what i can find um as far as the wrestling goes i know that whole uh, scaffold in incident with new jack is probably the most well-known um thing that happened within that promotion and even new jack says that like he's like they're not going to go down in history for nothing um they probably got like a, a moment or two where people would you know remember them by and that includes that moment with new jack um it, it was crazy like i'm not really doing it justice like you watch this and listen to it and seeing everything and you're like whoa what the hell like how do these things even fly um i believe they're probably um xpw with wrestling and the porn were to um in existence for maybe like four maybe five years before things just obviously um didn't work out and um it's sad because a lot of people didn't end up getting paid once those lawsuits started popping up um people didn't get paid for their work and you know checks which is bouncing and a lot of people these are real jobs for people even um the guy who produces the show also had to produce the porn as well and he's like you know his experiences with you know like news media and whatnot and all of a sudden he finds himself editing 
pornographic movies and he's like he didn't sign up for it and somehow that's just where things ended up and man i honestly i do think he was the one behind those two guys um coming after the messiah because it just makes sense i guess he he came off to be like super super jealous and a little vindictive and i could totally see him doing that so um vice they offered to you know come over and do interviews with rob and he didn't want to have nothing to do with it because he knew he was gonna look like a dumbass and, and if anything that's probably the best decision he could have made because now people are going to see this and people are going to be talking about it i wouldn't be surprised if somebody finds that you know burger joint that he's running and it could be a little bit of an issue for him but you know what unfortunately um sometimes um situations from the past comes back to haunt you you guys unfortunately next week is the season finale and it's about the steroid trial so this is going to be good really 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 good i'm very um excited to see this but it's going to be the last episode so now i've got to find other things to talk about in the world of pro wrestling thanks for watching my review